The revelations of the G20 spying come as the scandal caused by Snowden's earlier disclosures on the extent of U.S. surveillance after its own and foreign citizens is gaining momentum. Dozens of lawsuits are being filed against the government's practices, while many lawmakers continue to defend the operation. It has also emerged that the scope of the surveillance and the help it received from corporations may have been underestimated. Here's our Washington correspondent, Gana Chichikan, with more. What Edward Snowden revealed could be just the tip of the iceberg. We're learning that in addition to Internet giants, thousands of U.S. technology finance and manufacturing companies that include software and hardware producers, banks, Internet security providers, satellite telecommunications companies, thousands are working closely with U.S. national security agencies. According to the people familiar with the exchange, the cooperation of some of the companies has helped the U.S. government infiltrate computer computers worldwide. So this certainly adds to Edward Snowden's account. Snowden said he believed that the NSA uh, has carried out more than 1,000 hacking operations globally. Snowden said he was releasing the information to demonstrate, uh, quote, the hypocrisy of the U.S. government when it claims that it does not target civilian infrastructure, unlike its uh, adversaries. Uh, he also said, uh, the, quote, we hack network backbones, like huge internet routers, basically, that give us access to the communications of hundreds of thousands uh, of, of people, uh, of computers, without having to hack every single one. And these sources who speak on the condition of anonymity say U.S. companies help intelligence agencies do exactly that. And they say it's not subject to any oversight. Now, it's all done, of course, under the umbrella of national security. But there are some very obvious discrepancies here. Robert Mueller, director of the FBI, for example, he said the massive surveillance program that the U.S. has now could have prevented 9-11. Then what about the Fort Hood shooting in 2009? The perpetrator of that one, Nidal Malik Hassan, had been exchanging emails with Anwar Awlaki for a period of time, or Tamerlan Tsarnaev, multiple warnings over several years, uh, radical content on his YouTube web webpage. Uh, one may ask the question, then, why this massive collection of information when all of that was missed? Well, it's not just the U.S. government that's under fire for the extent of the surveillance. Many wonder why so many companies supplied the NSA with data. RT's Lucy Kafanoff looks at what might be in it for the firms. This story certainly raises more questions than it answers. As my colleague reported earlier, we know now that thousands of companies have been sharing sensitive information with the U.S. government in exchange for various benefits. Now, this raises concerns about the extent of the private sector collaboration with the U.S. government, not to mention questions about what exactly those benefits were. Now, the details may be murky at this point, but let's go over exactly what information we have. Now, companies who did hand over data to the government got a big thank you. That's according to Michael Hayden, who used to head the CIA as well as the National Security Agency, which runs, of course, the PRISM program. Now, Mr. Hayden told Bloomberg this. If I were the director and had a relationship with a company who was doing things that were not just directed by law, but were also valuable to the defense of the republic, I would go out of my way to thank them and give them a sense as to why this is necessary and useful. All right, well, what kind of thank you exactly are we talking about here? Well, again, not a lot of details, but anonymous sources did tell Bloomberg that leaders of the companies who handed over data to the government were showered with attention and information by government agencies. In fact, in some instances, that meant quick warnings about the threats that could affect their bottom line. For example, serious Internet attacks and who's behind them. Of course, this exchange of information is supposed to be voluntary. And while at this point, we don't exactly have evidence that this is not the case. But while most of the companies seem to have participated simply because the government asked them for help, one former CAO paints a slightly different picture. In 2001, when some telecom giants allegedly were asked to participate in an NSA information sharing program, one company, Quest, initially refused to play ball. And according to court documents filed by its then CAO, Joseph Naccio, as a result of that decision, the company was denied lucrative NSA contracts he believed to be worth 50 to 100 million dollars. Retaliation, he says, for refusing to partake in the government spy program. So to sum it up, companies that shared data, earned government goodwill, information about threats, possible classified information, and of course there's concern that those who did not play along could, could have been left out of lucrative government contracts.
Of course, we don't have more information on this, but that's precisely the point. The lack of transparency about this data swap is a major concern. Now, it's done in the name of security, but at what cost and to whom? Lucy Kafanov reporting for RT in Moscow.